Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul, seal your doom tonight. Hey guys, uh, my name's Adam, if this is your first time here, and today I've got seven cool DIY Halloween ideas for you. These aren't ideas that I personally came up with. Some of these ideas were just told to me. Some of them I discovered across the internet. Some of them I've been looking forward to trying out for a little while. Some of them I discovered didn't work as well as others, and we'll get into that later. As we all know, Halloween is the most creative time of the year, so that's what I really like about these ideas, is they're all ones that you can be creative with, and I offer up a few suggestions as to how I improve on a few of them. Let's get started. This one I'm just putting in because it's awesome is your own haunted mirror. This is a really cool idea. It's really cheap. All you really need is a cheap picture frame, mirror looking spray paint, and since there's a little bit of skill involved, a few more picture frames for practice. And a creepy picture to put into your picture frame. I found this one just by googling eyes that follow you. I don't know who the lady is, even if she's a real person, but uh, apparently those eyes will follow you. Spray paint the back of the glass. So the part that your spray painting will be touching the actual picture you'll be putting in. Put a heavy coat on the parts that you want to look like a mirror and the parts that you want to be visible in the picture. Put a very light coat. Now I'm gonna warn you that you're gonna want to put a significantly lighter coat than you realize. I actually had to wipe paint thinner over my work because I put a far heavier coat than I thought I did. Ways that you can be creative with this, just putting cool pictures in there. Maybe you want to put your friend, maybe somebody you're making fun of, that would actually be a funny idea. If your party has a specific theme, maybe you have a vampire in the mirror, although a vampire doesn't actually show up in a mirror. Whatever you'd like, you can be as creative with this as you'd like. Number six is an oldie but a goodie. This is guts or intestines if we're being technical. All you need for this is stockings and newspaper. There's two ways to do this. I'll show you the way that I was originally shown was to sort of stuff a little bit in and then tie a knot and stuff a little bit more in and tie a knot. That kind of looks cool or whatever, but I don't think it looks enough like intestines. The way that I think looks better is to make sort of a tube out of the um, newspaper and put a little bit more. Basically, stuff it with tubes of newspaper instead of knots, but you can do it however you like. There are a few really intricate tutorials out there that use hot glue to put veins on the guts and paint them. Feel free to do that if you like. Really, I think if you just want to put a little bit of blood on there, fake blood, why you can be creative with this, the thing is these are very versatile. You can hang them from the roof as decorations or you can have them coming out of a dummy's guts. I actually went on a zombie walk and I had a hairdresser's mannequin that had real hair. I attached that to a shirt, stuffed the shirt with newspaper and then had these guts coming out of it. Like I said, this is a really versatile, really easy, really cheap DIY trick that you can sort of have up your sleeve and uh, pull out whenever you feel it's appropriate. Number five, the floating ghost head. This is a really cool one that I stumbled across on Pinterest. All you really need is a styrofoam head, four pieces of cheesecloth, and some common white glue. Now you want to mix up the glue with a little bit of water, sort of like paper mache if you've ever done that before. What you want to do is layer the cheesecloths over the mannequin's face. You want to make sure to apply the glue specifically to the features of the face so that the cheesecloth will stick to it and they'll show through in the end. Now the key here is you don't want to go below the jawline. Ways that you can be creative with this, well, firstly you don't need to use a styrofoam head. You could use a skull, you could use a pumpkin-like head. You can use masks of actual people's faces underneath the cheesecloth. Anything you want you can cover in this and it'll sort of look like a floating ghost's face. Other ways is you could put lights in the face, maybe in the teeth or in the eyes. Number four, chicken wire ghosts. This is the one that I was the most excited about and had the most trouble with. Now, I did get it to work in the end, but uh, it was an interesting process. So all you need for this is chicken wire and glow-in-the-dark paint. You also want to get some pliers and wire snippers just so you can manipulate the chicken wire. You can shape your chicken wire to look like whatever. I just went with a generic lady's body with arms. Now, here's the thing. I live pretty far up north, so we don't get a lot of sun in my part of the world during during October. In fact, it's been overcast for pretty much the entire month. So I put this out in the sun and it didn't light up very much. I put it across the yard because I thought it would look cool to have something illuminating a body from across the yard. However, you just couldn't see it. Finally, I decided to make two more creations. Uh, one I painted white 
because I thought it would pop a little bit more. And the other one I painted white as a primer and then put glow in the dark paint over. I also went out and invested in a black light because I heard a few people online saying that that's the best way to get this one to work. I tried it with a black light and I'm gonna be honest, I was less than impressed. The problem is it didn't light up just the chicken wire, even though it was white, it lit up everything around it. However, when I turned off the black light, I was pleasantly surprised to see that my original creation was glowing. Now, it wasn't glowing enough to see across the yard, but at a close distance, it was glowing just enough to look really, really eerie. However, it wasn't glowing enough to capture with a camera. I tried with this camera that I'm using right now, I tried with my HD webcam, and I tried with my phone. None of them could pick it up, but trust me when I say that once it got enough light, it did light up just enough to look eerie at a close range, not enough to put across the yard and have people go, ooh, what's that? So my verdict is don't bother with the black light. How you can be creative with this is, of course you can make any sculpture you like. Just remember you're gonna need to do it at a very close range. Number three, speaking of glow in the dark, glow in the dark jars. Now all you'll need is jars, glow in the dark sticks, and glitter. Now you can go out and buy glitter or you can do what I did which is just collect it off your bed sheets from all this First things first is crack the glow stick, shake it to activate the glowing part. You want to do this with all of your glow sticks. Next you're going to want to cut the end off of your first glow stick. Empty the glowing juices into the jar. And of course if scissors don't work, feel free to cut with anything else you can find. Next you're going to want to put the glitter in. I find the thicker the better. If it's too thin the glitter won't really stick to the sides. If it's too Thick though, you won't really see too much light going through because the glitter will cover all of the walls. As you may be able to tell, I didn't exactly get it all in the jar. So that's one thing about this is everyone will be able to see your screw ups. However, they're easy to hide. This stuff washes away with water. So how can you be creative with this? This one is all about the packaging. Uh, say you're having a Ninja Turtles themed party, you put it in a mutagen case and you have mutagen. Say you're having a Peter Pan theory, I don't know why you would have a Peter Pan party. I'm sure some people do. Uh, now you have fairy dust. If you're having an alien themed party, this is the alien goo. Anything magical or mystical that you'd like to attribute these jars to, all you have to do is decorate them accordingly and it'll be legit. Number two, transparent hands. All you need for this is clear regular size tape and clear packing tape. Now the process is simple. Go twice around every body part with the sticky side facing out so that everything you touch would basically stick to whatever you're wrapping. Do that twice and then go back over it twice with the non-sticky side facing you so that it uh, seals itself sort of. You want to make sure that the fingertips are rounded and not sharp, of course. However, if you want sharp fingertips, nobody's going to criticize that either. For the palm, or really any big part of your body, you're going to want to use the packing tape. Like I said, twice sticky side up and then twice sticky side down. Before you cut yourself free, you want to make sure that everything's been attached with um, smaller tape. Once you've got everything covered, just take scissors and cut yourself loose. Now here's the cool part. Anything that doesn't end up sticking, you can just reattach with tape. In fact, the hole that you cut, you're gonna fix with tape. How can you be creative with this? Well, firstly, you can wrap any body part you would like, except for your face. Don't try this with your face. Use uh, a mannequin head like I showed earlier. Also, one thing that I think is really cool is I use expanding foam to make my own skulls. Now with this, I can use expanding foam to create my own hands, to create my own arms, to create whatever body part I'd like. Last but not least, what party would be complete without food? Jack Skellington candy apples. What you're gonna need are apples, popsicle sticks, white chocolate, and of course, black icing. Insert the popsicle sticks into the apples, get a pot, fill it with white chocolate, maybe a little more, maybe even a little bit more, and then melt the chocolate. Once everything's melted, you're gonna wanna take the apple and dip it into the white chocolate, and then set them aside on the wax paper until they've hardened, and then take the black icing and draw Jack Skellington's features on it. I'm sure most of you watching this are going to have better artistic school skills than me, and probably better cooking skills skills than me as well. So how can you be creative with this one? Well here's the thing is you don't have to use apples. You can replace the apples with literally anything this round. It's amazing how many things taste good with chocolate however you're gonna want to make sure that they taste 
good with chocolate before you serve them to anyone else. Maybe you have your own recipe for Rice Krispie Balls or Rum Balls. A lot of fruit tastes really good when it's dipped in chocolate. Me being Canadian, I went with Timbits. This is a cheap and easy way to be the savior of every party because when you show up with Jack Skellington Timbits, everybody's gonna want one. Anyway guys, that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you try these out and you have different results or if you find ways to improve them. I definitely wanna hear about them. Um, and if you have any other cool Halloween uh, I, DIYs that you do, um, let me know because I'd love to try them out. Maybe I'll make another video next year. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that Monday I will be doing a live show with my friend Adrian. His channel is Tasty Glue. He's labeled it the Tasty Junk Show with junk drawer videos being me and him, Tasty Glue. Check it out. Uh, check out the past episodes. We're going to do a live one every Monday. We were doing it on the weekends. We decided weekdays are better for you guys and for us because nobody wants to stay in on a weekend. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good one.